everybody. Great to have this opportunity to speak to you again and to keep you encouraged and focused on the kingdom of God. Last week, I talked about living our Christianity from the inside out. This is a subject that we'll continue to address um, and hopefully the ground we take now and the wells we dig deep, opening them up again in our relationship with God where there's fresh living water resourcing us will carry on way beyond when the lockdown is over. A.W. Tozer says this about Christianity. Modern religion focuses upon filling churches with people. The true gospel emphasizes filling people with God. Too, too easy, easily we can slip into marketing. How do we fill our building? How do we keep our people entertained? How do we you know, ensure that they stay? The only way we can do that is we preach the gospel and we disciple people in this word of God. There's only one way to live our lives, and that's by the word of God. And so God is restoring people back to himself. At this time, because we have all the distractions removed, it's important that we maximize our time with God and we mature in our understanding of, of how to have a good prayer time. And so I want to keep challenging you and me, all of us, is how is your relationship with God? Uh, have you got to a, like a kind of place where you've hit a wall? We need to get beyond that. Is there a kind of stalemate? We need to get beyond that. We never reach the end. There's always more when it comes to God. We need to keep growing in His grace. We need to keep growing in becoming more like Jesus. We need to uh, have our revelation grow and mature when it comes to understanding of God's character. And so I want to encourage you to keep persevering and keep pushing into your relationship with God. Kia is going to share a, a story with us that is for me a prophetic word about being still in God's presence. Thanks Kia. Hi Cornerstone, just have a word of encouragement for you that Marcus has asked me to share with you and that is I believe during this time of this lockdown period there's been a, a definite ceasing of the noise and the sound that we would hear and it's given us an opportunity of a number of days that we can just sit and be quiet and hear what God is saying. And just looked up the word sound and the first time it's mentioned in the book of the Bible is in Genesis 3 verse 8. Where it says, They heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. They knew that they had walked away from God's truth and questioned God's word. Yet, even as, if we could say, sinners, they could still hear his presence. His presence has a certain sound. We find in 1 Kings 18.41, And Elijah said to Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. Well, we are locked down, but eating and drinking in the sense that we are preparing ourselves, like a Passover, dressed ready for action, as the... Um, Israeli nation did after leaving Egypt, dressed with a staff in their hand shoes. And I feel that this time too is the time of us to have this opportunity to prepare ourselves. 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. This lockdown is temporal. COVID-19 is temporal. It has caused us to be in our homes. But the things which are not seen are eternal. And this has given us an opportunity of giving time to look at those things that we really need to listen to. 1 Corinthians 14, 8. For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself for battle? This is preparation time, rearmament time. It's like a SEAL team, special forces, bunch of guys being given a mission. They are only told the mission after they have armed themselves for what they need to do. I feel that this is what we are to do too. Acts 2, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled the house and where they were sitting. Were they in lockdown? The 12 disciples, or were 120, were they in lockdown waiting because the Romans are hunting for them? Could have been. And so we hear these through the Bible. Luke 141, when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. 
I love that because when you hear a sound, something leaps within you. Is there something leaping in us during this time, Cornerstone, that there is an excitement and expectation of something to happen? And just to end off with an illustration, a game ranger had the job of taking a blind woman on a game drive. He was not very happy about the idea because he thought he'd have to explain every single bird sound, squeak in the bush, every rumble from an elephant. After a few minutes in the drive and him trying to explain everything to her, she said to him, can you just keep quiet? I want to hear and see what's going on in the bush. And he began to keep quiet too. And he began to realize that there's a whole new world of sound, of the presence of animals that are around him, not just relying on the visibility of sight. It's like us, we walk by faith, not by sight. And then they came across where a couple of leopards were mating. While that was happening, she touched him and said, there's another leopard on the other side of the road. He looked over the other side of the road and saw nothing, just vegetation. And he said, are you sure? He says, yes, I know he's there. Watch. And as he watched, sure enough, out came a leopard from the bush walking towards the other two. And here is the thing. She sensed or heard the presence of that leopard before seeing it. What is God saying to us? Can we sense his presence? And that's what God has been doing for us, Kelly and I, as we have just having this time down as we want to hear him walking, yet not seeing him and knowing because his presence has a sound. God bless you all. Thank you for that, Kia. We really do appreciate uh, the wisdom and the challenge that there is in being still before the Lord. And I want to encourage us. Remember, prayer is two ways. We talked about it. It's not just my list. It's me waiting in God's presence and trusting uh, him to speak to me, waiting for his voice, just falling more and more in love with him all the time. Uh, man, there's nothing more important than me and God together. So next, I want to just speak about generosity and ministering to the poor. At a time like this, um, obviously, the plight of those who are less advantaged than we are uh, comes to the fore and it is important that we address it when we read the early church uh, Paul says you know uh, I'm going to continue to do the thing that's on your heart when he writes uh, to those in Jerusalem to the leaders there I'm also have the poor in my heart and it is important that we minister to the poor and we look for ways to be practical in showing the love of Christ and in this regard I want to thank you Cornerstone Right across all our sites, um, there is incredible help that's going out to those who, because of the time that we're in, are, are just battling, battling with food, battling with basic expenses. Uh, and so I want to applaud you for your generosity. Um, you know, we have this special COVID-19 uh, account where we draw money to buy parcels and to pay various expenses for people. But I tell you, we reduce the balance and it's replenished. So I want to encourage you, just keep being generous. Um, so far, we've had 150 parcels from all sites go out. We've had rent and living costs paid for many. And then through Ukwake Seswe, uh, we've seen a church in one of the informal settlements, 50 parcels, food parcels go out. We've also ministered to uh, 40 families in Primrose and to a community of blind folk in Jeppistan. Thank you for your generosity. So we're going to have a, a, a report back from one of our sites. Southside, Rodney DeCroix is one of the elders there, and he's going to give us a report on what they've been doing over there. Hi, my name is Rodney, and just wanted to put this little video clip out um, as a matter of appreciation for all those who have contributed to the Cornerstone COVID-19 account uh, that has been set up to help uh, some of the folk who are in desperate need. We're on our way to go buy some food and um, and then we bring it back to home base. We repack it um, into packages and then send it out to the families. Um, and I can't tell you with how much gratitude we have um, when we arrive at these families. Even the children are so excited to actually see us as we're bringing some of the food across uh, to them. Um, I don't think that many people have 
as much an opportunity as we have had in the last while just to go out and help people in this way. We've got our packages all ready, so it's off to delivery. So yeah, I am with some of my friends, and there's Ian over there, and um, Otto. and Otto over there. So uh, we're just uh, doing our deliveries. So there you go. Thank you, Rodney. That was awesome. Uh, I liked your video. It was very good. So just lastly, when it comes to generosity and ministry to the poor, just a reminder. Uh, we're not in a church meeting where you get reminded on Sundays about the offering. And we don't see the bags get passed from the right to the left kind of thing. But I want to remind us, um, our testimony is last month, all our expenses were paid. Every one of them, including elder salaries. They were late by about 10 days, but they were paid. And for that, we thank God. And now I just want to remind us of our responsibility before the Lord when it comes to obedience with tithing and, generos and generosity with our giving. Um, you know... Along with praying together, this is one of the important areas of our responsibility in a local church. So if this is your local church, there is a responsibility for us before God to be obedient with our tithe and generous in our giving. And so make it a prayerful moment as a couple, as an individual, and trust God uh, for him to show you what to do with the offering. And then, of course, uh, to be obedient with the tithes. And then trust Him for the blessing and for the absolute joy uh, that comes with that. So thank you, Cornerstone. Really appreciate you guys. I want to end with this scripture, a scripture of blessing and favor. Psalm 67, May God be gracious to us and bless us and make His face to shine upon us, Selah, that your way may be known on earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God, and let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide the nations upon earth, Selah. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has healed it, its increase. God, our God, shall bless us. God shall bless us. Let all the ends of the earth fear him. Did you hear that? God shall bless us. And so let's trust him for his favor. Let's pray for his favor for each other and for ourselves as families. Love you a lot. Look forward to speaking to you again.